will you'll have it um, to be able to review in um, when you wake up in the middle of the night and you have nothing better to do. So we have talked about pricing, how we price the object, target pricing, target um, costing or cost plus pricing. Now we're switching to budgetary planning. Budgets are crucial in a business because you need to have the inventory, the funds, you, you need to be able to project your sales, to project what cash you need, to project your inventory, to project um, um, employees. And so we're gonna um, spend most of today and potentially next Tuesday talking about budgeting. What is a budget? A formal written statement of management's plans for a specified future time period that's um, expressed in monetary numbers. It's the way we communicate all of our objectives to the company. Ultimately, it's trying to promote efficiency, but it's really more than that a control, advice, a, a control device. A control device to put into plans what you need for cash, what you need for resources, in order to um, end up with the results of the monies you need along with whatever expenditures need to be in place to make those sales. How many of you guys operate on a budget? Does it work? Well, companies need to operate on budgets also. Everything's got limited, we all have limited resources and can um, provide those resources to what's driving or what's important to us. Right now, for many of you guys, you're either forking out a lot of money for tuition or you're choosing to invest in that, which may be loans for tuition for the purpose of ultimately having potential success down the road. Same is true with businesses. Um, there's only so many uh, funds or resources available and they have to determine which products or um, services they're going to provide along with the costs. Budgeting and accounting, historical data is what we are familiar with mainly as it relates to financial information. Revenues, cost, and expenses, that's all historical data of what we've already done. But that historical data really comes into play to help us in determining how we're going to calculate our budgets, aren't they? Accountants normally are responsible for presenting management's budgeting goals in the terms of numbers. And basically the budget and the administration really are the responsibility of management. There's different ways in which budgets are created and thoughts on which are more successful um, types of budgeting, but ultimately management determines how budgets are created and sometimes they use a top-down approach where they say, hey, this is what you're gonna, we're gonna be making this year, or sometimes they get the input of all involved, which generally is going to be um, ultimately a more successful budget in my opinion because you have the input from those people who ultimately have responsibility with it. What are benefits? Um, you got a plan. You got to plan ahead. It provides objectives in evaluating performance. If the budget is the goal or the, the benchmark for what you're desiring to achieve, then everyone knows what is expected of them in their um, realm within the department. If something is amiss, you'll know ahead of time just because this budget is kind of like a planning tool for what you hope to achieve. It helps coordinate activities and management becomes aware of really what, where the company's going. And hopefully it motivates personnel to meet the objectives. Nothing's worse than a budget that is totally unattainable and you see the budget and you know it's a big joke because there's no way anyone can meet the goals. So there are budgets that can just be doomed to start. That's not ultimately the plan of a budget. The plan of the budget is to keep it as that benchmark of what you're hoping to achieve. And then as employees, when you know you can meet your objectives, you're rewarded for it. So budgets are meant to be a good thing. 
Which of the following is not a benefit of budgeting? Management can plan ahead. An early warning system is provided for potential problems. It enables disciplinary action to be taken at every level of responsibility. Or the coordination of activities is facilitated. C. C? What do you guys think? Yes. <laughs> Essentials of budgeting. Um, of course, great organizational structure with solid management is really a nice thing. And the key here, though, <coughs> I think effective budgeting has to begin with realistic goals. And that everyone buys into the budget. That's important. The budget period is generally prepared for a one-year period. You can have monthly or quarterly budgets, but generally speaking, we're going to deal with one-month periods or one-year periods. It's got to be long enough to have some goals to be attained, and yet short enough to be um, so the estimates that we're determining can be fairly true to form. How do we start a budget? We base our goals on past performance. You've got to, you've got to start from somewhere. You've got to have some criteria in which to begin the base. You get information for, from the various units. You usually start before the end of the year so you can plan for the next budget. And ultimately, <coughs> sales is the most driving force of a budget. Sales being the number of returns are going to be completed, the number of um, items that are going to be sold. Sales are what ultimately drives the budget, right? Because from sales determines what costs you need. You generally, um, factors considered in determining potential sales. What are the economic conditions doing? What are the industry trends? looking like? How about market trends? What are you anticipating for promotional items or advertising? What market share have you had in the business? Any pricing that's going to be changing? Or any developments in technology? So you really have to have an overall understanding of what's happening in the economy and where you stand in the economy to really even go forward with a reasonable budget. What happened, well even right now, let's take homeowner, or home builders. Home builders, what are some issues they need to um, contend with? Anyone think of it? Seasons. Seasons, weather. How about our economic environment lately? We have been in a slump with the housing market and we had huge inventories on hand for years. And now, so during that time when the market was flooded with so many sellers and not enough buyers, do you think builders are even going to attempt to try to um, increase their building? It was a terrible market. Foreclosures were all over the place. You could pick up houses for a penny. Now what's happening, the economy is starting to tighten up. The homes... You hear people that put their home on the market and it's gone in two days right now. Five years ago, you couldn't even sell a home. So now that the market is kind of getting a little more um, desirable for sellers to want to start selling homes and buyers are wanting to buy them because the market supposedly is turning around, what do you think builders are starting to plan as they're looking at the market getting better. Just the economic condition is more favorable for builders today. It's still not great, but it's better than it's been in the past five, six years. You know how many builders I know that have gone out of business? Because they just couldn't sell a home. They couldn't even sell it for their cost in it. Okay? So do you see how important it is to really look at how the market is um, beneficial for what you're dealing with? Okay. How about schooling? You know, education has been huge in the past five, six years. The market went down. You know what happens when the market goes to pot? Education goes crazy because people are trying to train for new positions. 
Now that the market's turning around, you just see a little dip in the education, which I don't have a problem with because that means people are getting jobs. You know, it was almost scary how many people were going back to school to retrain. But so when, when people like in, um, educational institutions are planning for potential um, changes in the future years, they've got to take into account right now, enrollment's declining about 10% is the average on institutions this year from last year. Chances are it's not going to increase anytime soon because our market looks like it's getting better. Am I making sense what I'm trying to say? All these things you have to take into account or your budget's not even going to be reasonable, is it? Um, industry trends. Who can ex under explain what an industry trend might be? Things that are changing with the times. If I were building and I were, was manufacturing public payphones today, will I become a millionaire anytime soon? Should someone slap me in the face and wake me up yes. and tell me this is the millennium? Yes. Do trends count as things that, like, that change and stay changed or things that come and go? You know, because like I was kind of thinking of a trend as something that comes and goes, but like we're probably not going to ever go back to pay phones again. Trends are both. Okay. Trends are going to be both. What are people desiring right now? Yeah. Okay? And trends will come and then they're going to stay gone forever. <clears throat> are we going to ever get pay public phones? The only way we're going to see public pay phones come back is our whole, um, inner system just collapses, you know, and we lose all our satellites. It's never going to happen, okay? Um, <clears throat> trends. How many of us are riding trains today? How many of us take airlines? Do you know I wanted to take a, a, a train ride um, a year ago? I thought it would be fun for my husband and I to do all this. It was more expensive than an airplane uh, fare. So. I mean, why wouldn't I get there within two hours when it take me three days to go the other route and it's more expensive? Um, New York City. <coughs> you can spend you can get a ticket to New York City for two hundred twenty bucks for an airplane ride, two forty, yet a train ride was horrendous. It was more the experience. Our trends are going for fast service, fast delivery. Maybe one day they will change the market with train rides and make that more of an appealing um, form of travel. But is it right now? What are the trends happening right now in the um, cruise industry? How many of you guys have ever taken a cruise? Okay. Well, you know what? Right now you can buy them for peanuts. Why? What? Anyone know why? The negative. What has negatively affected the cruise industry recently? A big accident. A big accident? The the what? The toilets are flooded. Boy, I wish I I wish I would have known all about this before I took my cruise this <laughs> Christmas. No, but seriously. Things are looking down on the cruise industry right now. They built so many, you know, they um, planned on um, manufacturing all of these huge boats and a lot of them went into um, production. And then we had that accident in it, off Italy because of some dumb captain did something goofy. And then we're having all these epidemics on the cruise ships because of cleanliness. People are running away from them, right? So. Who could have predicted that? Of course, right now they're really taking their advertising and pretty much um, giving these cruise, uh, the extra rooms away for a song because they want to fill up the boats. So you've got to be aware of in the budgeting process, taking into account everything as it relates to your sector in the economy. Budgeting and human behavior. Guys, even in this class, maybe you don't agree, but how many of you like to be a part of making the decisions? Doesn't it make you feel more included in that we're a team together? 
If I came in here and said, okay, this is how we're doing it, everybody better shut up, and here are your two tests, and this is how the score is going to be. You're just kind of like, okay, this is going to be fun. Whereas if you've got a different piece where you feel like your voice counts somewhat, how's your attitude going to be different in here? More receptive. Generally more receptive. You feel more like you, you matter. I mean, at least that's what my goal is. Is it working? Mm -hmm. Good. Am I making sense? Participative budgeting is definitely going to be much more beneficial for the, in the long run than when someone from the top tells you what you better be doing or this is how we're going to increase our plans for the year. Now, it um, is tough where everybody is invited to participate. It takes more of a coordinated effort, but in the long run, really that's how budget, budget should be um, handled because everyone has a piece in it, and then you take some ownership in the results. The benefit of participative, participative budgeting is it's more, going to be more accurate. And um, since there's more detail, because those end people with the hands-on experience really know the nuts and bolts versus someone at the top just telling you how it's going to be, it's going to ultimately result in um, more accurate numbers. And it seems to be more fair because people all have a say in it. The risk of it is, um, the risk of unreliable budgets are greater when they're top down. When someone from the top says, this is what's going to be done, and there's not the consensus of the employees, it's going to be a little harder to want to follow. Makes total sense, doesn't it? Isn't that how we work just as people in general? What are the disadvantages of it? It can be very time consuming to get everyone's involvement. Flow of budget data from lower management to top levels. So here is an example of when budgeting works from the bottom up. The managers help give information to the middle managers that ultimately help um, provide that information up to the executive branch. So that's a good way in which um, budgets can take place. Three differences with budgeting and long range planning, the time period involved, the emphasis and the detail. So budgeting is determining ultimately the plan for the next period. Long-range planning sometimes can involve a decade of where do we want to see ourselves down the road in 10 years. That's going to be a lot of, a lot of mini steps to get to the long-range planning. The essentials of effective budgeting do not include A, top-down budgeting, <coughs> B, management acceptance, C, research and analysis, are D, sound organizational structure. C? What do you think it's going to be? Who, who said that? Top-down budgeting is not going to be as effective, is it? We're going to start with a master budget. This master budget is a set of many mini budgets based on various um, directions. And they're going to all come together to um, work, work together, ultimately containing what's called operating budgets along with financial budgets. So operating budgets are going to be related to what type of production are we going to occur um, and have our plan or budget for the year. But along with those operating budgets, we need to get resources, don't we? To do that operating budget, we need to come up with resources. So operating budgets and financial budgets are going to work hand in hand with one another. So financial budgets involve the monies, um, capital expenditures, cash budgets, and basically cash we need to have on hand 
to meet those operating needs. Budgeting basics. We're going to start with a sales budget. That is the, if I, you get a question, what's the first budget that is needed for an integrated budget? What are we going to have? Yeah. Sales budget. From the sales budget, we're going to have to come up with a production budget, which me means how much do we need in direct materials, direct labor, and manufacturing overhead. And then from there, we need our selling and admin budget. And then from there, based on what our income statement we plan to have look like, we've got to come up with some financial budgets to make it all happen. If you don't have money, you can't do much, right? So we need to make sure we have the resources in place to be able to fulfill these operating budgets. Use this list of terms to complete the sentences that follow. This looks like a good matching. A blank shows potential sales for the industry and a company's expected share of sales. What would that be? A sales forecast. A blank, blank are used as the basis for the preparation of the budgeted income statement. Uh, who said operating budgets? The blank is a set of interrelated budgets that constitutes a plan of action for a specified time period. Blank identifies long-term goals, selects strategies to achieve these goals, and develops policies and plans to implement the strategies. This is a good matching, isn't it? Lower level managers are more likely to perceive results as fair and achievable under a blank approach. Blank focus primarily on the cash resources needed to fund expected operations and planned capital expenditures. Good. First budget we prepare is a sales budget. This is going to be um, um, calculated or created based on what we forecast the sales to be. And every other budget is going to come off of the sales budget. The first and most important budget piece. Um, here's an example of a sales budget. Expected sales volume of 3,000 units in the first quarter with a 500 unit increase in each succeeding quarter at a sales price of 60 bucks a unit. Do you see how in the first quarter, 3,000 at 60? Now in the second quarter, we're going to up at 500 units. Third quarter, another 500 units. Fourth quarter, another. Here's a real simplified sales budget. How much are we anticipating to sell? Then, as a result of the sales budget, we are going to come up with a production budget. This shows units that have to be produced, created, to meet what the sales are. Guys, we're not going to be able to sell anything if we don't have the goods to sell, are we? So from our sales, we've got to make sure we have the goods in order to sell them. This is going to come from the sales budget based on the desired change in ending finished goods inventory. So basically, we've got to determine what we need to sell plus what we anticipate our ending inventories to be to determine what we need to produce. So as you see here, the budgeted sales units plus what we want to be in the ending inventory minus the beginning finished goods unit are going to equal what we need to produce for the period. Make sense? Here's an example. Hayes Company believes it can meet future sales needs with an ending inventory of 20% of the next quarter sales. So they want 20% to be on hand at the end of the previous quarter for the next quarter. So if 
in this example, if we're anticipating to have to sell 3,500 units, what do we want to have on hand at the end of the period? We want 700 units on hand, right? So if, if we want 700 units on hand, that means we need to have 3,700 units, but we start with what we um, show in the finished goods units to come up with what we need to produce during that quarter. Okay, and you can see it flow out for the year. Becker Company. Becker estimate, estimates that 2014 unit sales will be 12,000 in quarter one, 16,000 in quarter two, and 20,000 in quarter three at a unit selling price of 30 bucks. Management desires to have ending finished goods inventory equal to 15% of the next quarter's expected unit sales. We need to prepare a production, production budget by quarter for the first six months. So do you see unit sales are going to be 12,000 in quarter one, 16 in quarter two, 20 in quarter three for 30 bucks. Management desires to have ending finished goods inventory to be equal to 15% of the next. How are we going to start this? Our unit sales are going to be 12,000. We want our ending finished goods to be what? 15% of what? The next quarter, 2,400. Then, so we need 14,400 units, but we can show our finished goods inventory at the beginning of the quarter is 1,800, which we got because the 12,000 in sales, we needed to have 15% of those on hand at the previous period. So we need to produce 12,600 units. So let's look at the next quarter. Expected unit sales in quarter two will be how much? 16,000. Our ending finished goods we want should be 3,000, which means we need units of 19,000, but subtract from that what we had in ending finished goods shows us how we need to produce. So you keep doing that to then come up with a manufacturing budget. Then from there, we need to create a direct materials budget. How many materials do we need on hand to produce the amount of items we need? This shows both quantity and cost of materials. And we've got a formula here for quantities. We show the direct material units plus whatever our ending units are minus our beginning units are the required direct material units we need to purchase. So in this hand, we need to make sure we have enough materials on hand. What happens if you don't have enough materials on hand? What happens to production? It stops. Not a good thing, is it? You don't want to have halts in production because everything's shut down and then you've got a lot more waste, okay? Really important, you plan for the inventory so it's on hand, it doesn't slow production. So, the Hayes is lucky. It's got suppliers all over the place. Hayes maintains an inventory of raw materials equal to 10% of the next quarter's production. The, man, they manufacture, the manufacture of each right, tri, right ride requires two pounds of raw materials and the expected cost per pound is $4. Assume that the desired ending materials amount is 1,020 pounds for the fourth quarter. How are we going to prepare a, ma a direct materials budget? So as you can see, we determine how many units need to be produced times the materials we need per unit plus how much we want to have on hand for the next period, at the end of the year period, 
minus what we had on hand at the end of the period. So we know the material purchases times how much per unit or material gives us our costs we need in order to purchase those materials. Does that make sense? <coughs> Soriano Company is preparing its master budget for 2014. Relevant data pertains to its sales, production, and direct material budgets are as follows. Sales for the year are expected to total 1.2 million units. Quarterly sales are 20%, 25, 30, and 25 respectively. That's of this 1.2 units. The sales price is expected to be 50 bucks a unit for the first three quarters and 55 per unit beginning in the fourth quarter. Sales in the fourth quarter of 2015 are expected to be 10% higher than the budgeted sales for the first quarter of 2014. Production tells us management wants to maintain ending finished goods inventories at 25% of the next quarter's budgeted volume. And then they tell us about our direct materials. Each unit requires three pounds of raw materials at a cost of five bucks per pound. Management desires to maintain its raw material inventories at 5% of the next quarter's production requirements. It gives us everything. What are we going to do with this? Well, let's start with the sales production, the sales first. Then we'll move to production, then we'll move to direct materials. We want sales to be 240000 for the first quarter. What's our selling price? 50 to give us total sales of 12 million. What's the second quarter? 300,000 at 50. The third quarter, 360 at 50. What was going to change in the fourth quarter? The selling price was going up. So here we are planning on 1.2 million and we're anticipating sales of 61,500,000. Now we've got to determine how much we need to produce. We're going to have how many we anticipate in sales. What do we want our desired ending inventory to be? How many units are required minus our beginning finished goods to determine how many we need to produce? Does that make sense? Then from there, we need to come up with our direct materials budget in order to produce those goods. Then from there, we're going to have a direct labor budget. Based on the units to be produced and how much time needs to be, uh, is needed in labor per unit and the cost per hour, it's going to give us our direct labor budget. Let's take a minute and work on a problem, okay? How are we doing? So we are going to start with what's the first problem? Microsoft Office 8 or was it Windows 8? Windows 8. Guys, I don't even know how to use my computer. It's hard. I don't even know how to get out of a screen and get back to where I want to be. Are you on, do you have an Apple? No, it's a Dell. I know you go to the corner. Yeah, I'm looking at these darn corn. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so, but you, it's dark. Yeah. Why can't it just have a little deal? Isn't there a Windows button? A little deal. Like on the laptop? Oh, on the laptop, a Windows button? Yeah, you press the Windows. Maybe that's my problem. 
Okay, thank you, dear. So where are we right now? Okay. Sorry, guys. Let me get myself... Get the book up. are we on for chapter 9? 450? Thank you. Okay. Exercise 9-1. Oh, 9-2. That's right. has always done some planning for the future. God, 9-2. Sorry, guys. Eddington Electronics produces and sells two models of pocket calculators. XQ103 and XQ104. The calculators sell for $15 and $25 respectively. Because of the intense competition Eddington faces, management budgets sales semi-annually, its projections for the first two quarters of 2014 are as follows. So the product 103 Sales of 20,000 units, quarter two, 22,000 units. The XQ104, 12,000 units, and 15,000 units. No changes in selling prices are anticipated. We're supposed to prepare a sales budget for the two quarters <coughs> ending June 30th. List the products. Guys, I can't hear. I'm sorry. I'm just trying to, I don't know who's talking, but it's annoying. Prepare a sales budget for the two quarters ending June 30th. List the products and show for each quarter and for the next six months units, selling price, and total sales by product and in total. So we need to create a sales budget and the products and show for each quarter the units, the selling prices, and the total sales. Okay? So let's go back here and see two pocket calculators, 103, 104. They're telling us what they sell for. The 103 sells for 15 bucks, the 104 <coughs> sells for 25 bucks. And here are the projections. So let's go and figure out how we're going to do this. Okay? So we're going to Oops, wrong way. Okay. 
here we've got whoops So we've got the two products, 103, we've got 20,000 units, we're anticipating that selling price to be 15 for total sales of 300,000. The product 104 of 12,000 units, we want the selling price to be 25 bucks for a total sales price here of $300,000. So our total sales in quarter one are anticipated to be 600,000, right? Now it gave us the same information for quarter two. Quarter two, it said 22,000 units at a selling price of 15 bucks would make our sales at 330,000. Then we show unit 104 was increasing 3,000 units at 25 bucks, gave sales of $375,000. What's going to happen? What are the guidelines as far as the increased production? those two miles because of the intense competition projects sales semi-annual it projects the first two quarters here so first quarter of 20 second quarter 22 and it wants us uh, prepare our sales budget for the two quarters ending list the products and show for each quarter and for the six months <laughs> units selling price and total sales by product and in total so as we move back here hmm. here I am no gosh thank you okay so how much for the just the six months, quarter one and quarter two, we've got units of 42,000, the 20 and the 22, and for the other calculator, the 12 and the 15 or 27,000 units. So right now we have total sales of 1,305,000. Okay? I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> there. No. go guys sorry okay tell me when I can move on Um, the 20,000 units here and the 
the um, 22,000 units here. So 20 plus 22 is 42,000 units. And then the same here, 12,000 plus 15,000, 27,000 units. <clears throat> okay? Guys, this is online too for you, just so you know. Okay, let's look at the next problem. 9-3. Garza, golly, I'm sorry guys, I'm just there. Garza and Neely, CPAs, are preparing their service revenue budgets for the coming year. The practice is divided into three departments, auditing, tax, and consulting. Billable hours for each department by quarter are provided below. So our auditing, our tax and our consult our consulting. Average hourly billings for rates or uh, billing rates for auditing are eighty dollars, for tax are ninety dollars, and for consulting it's a hundred dollars. We're going to prepare the service revenue or sales budget for 2014 by listing the departments and showing for each quarter and the year in total, billable hours, billable rate, and total revenue. So if we go back here, we'll see they tell us the billable hours. They tell us that the billable hours for auditing are 2300 for tax or 3000 and for consulting it's 1500 They give us the rates for each of these services and we come up with our total revenues. We do that for each quarter and then from there we come up with the amount for the entire year. So all we're doing for a yearly total is taking each quarter and adding them all together. Okay, can we move on? Okay, so moving on here, um, 9-4, Turney Company produces and sells automobile batteries the heavy duty HD 240. The 2014 sales forecast shows quarter one, 5,000, quarter two, 7,000, quarter three, 8,000, and the fourth quarter, 10,000. The January 1st, 2014 inventory of HD 240 is 2,000 units. Management desires an ending inventory each quarter equal to 40% of the next quarter sales. Sales in the first quarter of 2015 are expected to be 25% higher than sales in the same quarter 2014. So we need to prepare a quarterly production budget. So they're basically telling us 
that in 2015, they're expecting our first quarter of 2015 to be how much? 25% higher than 5,000, or how much would that be? 6,250? Okay, so let's look at how we're gonna produce this budget. Expected sales, five, seven, eight, and 10. Does, bless you, desired ending finished goods inventory is 40% of the next quarter. So 40% of 7,000 is going to be our 2,800 desired ending units. Here, 40% of 8,000 is going to be 3,200. 40% of 10,000 are 400. And then 40% of our 6,250 is going to be 2,500. So we see the units that are required minus our um, beginning finished good units, which are going to be 40% of that um, period, show us how much we need to produce. Right? Pretty straightforward. Let's move on to the next portion. Prepare the quarterly production budgets for each quarter and in total for 2014. So we've got our production budgets of, excuse me here. of 30,500 for the period, okay? Now, I think we're gonna move on to, is it 9-7? I think 9-7 is the next one. 9-5 is next, but we'll probably skip it. I'm gonna move on to, you can see guys, this is really pretty straightforward, this chapter. It really is. 9-7. Chandler Limited estimates sales for the second quarter of 2014 to be as follows. April, May, and June. The target ending inventory of finished products is shown here. Two units of material are required for each unit of finished product. Production for July is estimated at 2,700 units to start building inventory for the fall sales period. Chandler's policy is to have an inventory of raw materials at the end of each month equal to 50% of the following month's productions, and they give us the cost per unit. We have to calculate May's raw materials. Again, very straightforward, just like the um, PowerPoint showed. We're going to start with our sales plus our ending inventory minus what's in our beginning inventory to determine how much we need to produce, times how many materials we need per unit, and then uh, units of materials plus what we want in our ending inventory minus our beginning inventory. So it lets us know what we need to purchase times the cost per unit gives us how many dollars worth of materials we need to purchase. Okay? All of this is online, guys. What I'd like you to do is review these. I really think this is fairly straightforward. What I'd like you to ultimately do before next Tuesday is go over 
um, exercise 910. This is putting it all together, the overall manufacturing overhead budget. This might be a problem you'll have on the next test, kind of combining what we know our sales are to then determine what we need to produce and what the cost is to produce those. Any questions on this chapter? Are you guys doing okay with it? Okay. Any questions at all? How are you doing? <laughs>